Greek culture. This is going to be a review of part of all four sections of chapter five. The first section we're going to talk about is literature. The myths were the traditional stories about gods and goddesses, and the Greeks didn't think that these were, these were just stories. They thought that they were a true part of Greek history. Homer was the blind poet, and he wrote the two main epic poems that we've talked about in class. The Iliad, which was all about the Trojan War, and then the Odyssey that tells about Odysseus' adventures on his way home. Aesop wrote fables that taught a moral lesson. In most of them, animals could talk. One of the most famous examples is the tortoise and the hare. Drama is yet another main Greek contribution. The Greeks performed plays outdoors as part of religious festivals to honor the gods. Tragedies were any stories that had unhappy endings. The early ones had only one actor and a chorus that sang songs that told the story. There are three main tragedy writers we've learned about, Aeschylus, Sophocles, and Euripides. Comedies are stories with happy endings. They didn't have to be funny back then, they just had to have a happy ending. And Aristophanes is the greatest comic comedy writer. He made fun of politicians and scholars. If you remember, we talked about how he made fun of Socrates in his play, The Clouds. Art and architecture are next. They express the Greek ideas of beauty and harmony. They had beautiful murals on paintings and paintings on vases and drinking cups, usually shown in red and black, and these would show scenes from everyday life and mythology. They had temples dedicated to the gods, and those were the most important. The Parthenon in Athens is the most famous. That was built by Pericles, and that honored the goddess Athena. They also were famous for their large columns that came in three different styles, the Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian. Remember, the Doric is the dorky and sort of boring one. Ionic was the one that had the eyes or the scrolls on the ends, and the Corinthian is the fancy one. At first, they, made, they were made of wood, and then later on, they started building them out of marble. However, they still had to build them in sections and stack them with wooden pegs to hold them in place. Many buildings today are built in the Greek style, including the U.S. Capitol, the White House, churches, and other government buildings. Sculpture was one of the most famous types of Greek art, and their favorite topic was the human body. They tried to show perfection and beauty. Philosophy, science, and history. The word philosophy literally means love of wisdom. And because they were asking all these questions and trying to figure out the problems of the world, this led to the study of history, math, political science, and science. Most Greek thinkers were called philosophy, philosophers, and many were teachers. Pythagoras was one of the most famous, who was also a mathematician. He developed ideas about math, like how to figure out the length of a side of a right triangle, which is what we call the Pythagorean theorem now. Sophists were professional teachers who traveled around and taught for pay. They believed that people should use knowledge to improve themselves and develop the art of public speaking and debate. Socrates was the most famous teacher of philosophy. He believed in the absolute truth taught by the Socratic method. In other words, he would ask questions and force students to think for themselves. And he was accused by the Athenian leaders of teaching the youth to rebel or corrupting the youth by teaching them to ask questions, and he was forced to drink poison. Plato was Socrates' greatest student. He wrote The Republic, and in that book he described the ideal government, which was made up of three groups in society. You had the philosopher kings, you had the warriors, and you had everyone else. He also started a school in Athens called the Academy. Aristotle was Plato's greatest student at the Academy. He advanced many ideas of science. He wrote over 200 books. He came up with the idea of observation, which has been added to the scientific method. And he wrote about the three types of government, monarchy, oligarchy, and democracy, and said that the best was a mixture of oligarchy and democracy, and this shaped many ideas of governments today, including our own. Now for the historians. Herodotus wrote a history of the Persian Wars. It was the first written history book in the Western world. He tried to write facts and not myths or legends, but he still sometimes used gods and goddesses as explanation for the events. He's considered to be the father of history. Thucydides, on the other hand, stressed accuracy. He wrote the history of the Peloponnesian War after fighting in it himself. He's considered to be the greatest historian of the ancient world because he used primary sources and made sure to only use facts in his book. Now, Alexander the Great, we talked a lot about him in class. He was the son of Philip II of Macedonia who conquered Greece in 338 BC at the Battle of Charbonia. And Alex had been tutored as a child by Aristotle and he loved all things Greek, he and his dad both. He even kept a copy of the Iliad under his pillow. He took throne at age 20 when Philip was murdered and he planned to conquer all of Asia, starting with the Persian Empire. 
Now, Alexander not only conquered the Persian Empire like his daddy wanted him to, he conquered as far east as India, the whole way to the Indus River, but died on the return trip home when he was only 32. After Alexander's death in 323 BC, the Hellenistic era began. And the word Hellenistic literally means like the Greeks. And so the legacy of Alexander the Great, or what he left behind, he spread Greek ideas, art, language, and architecture wherever his soldiers went. The empire ended up breaking into four kingdoms after his death, but all of them kept Greek language and customs, and they spread them to their colonies in Southwest Asia. Hopefully this will help you review for your test Tuesday.